What about accessing data? Well, in the MATLAB tool strip, on the MATLAB tool strip, there is an import tool. So if you're working with tabular data and you don't really know how to get started and you want to bring that data into MATLAB, there's now an automated tool to help you do that. So it allows you to basically render the data in this user interface. You can see what's there. You can see what MATLAB is going to do. You can talk about what, how MATLAB is going to return that data back. In this case, table would be the default option. And then what are you going to do about um, data you can't bring in? You're going to fill in it with NANDs. You know, what are the choices going to be? So that's what this tool is all about, really designed for. And one of the coolest things this will do is it will also give you the ability to generate a script or a function. So it will give you back the MATLAB code for whatever you did interactively, with the idea being you go in here, you set this up once, and then you reuse that knowledge or that effort you know, forever after. And that idea permeates throughout the entire platform, not just in this tool. But this is a way to get going quickly to bring data into MATLAB and just start being able to, to make sense of what you have. What about accessing data? I mentioned that earlier that you can access data even in different places. So if I wanted to read an image file in from my hard drive, I could do it like this. Set up the file location where that thing sits on my hard drive, and then call IM read on that. If the data were sitting on the cloud, I now can use the exact same syntax that I use for IM read. I just set up a few more um, variables up top to tell MATLAB where to look. So here I'm setting some environment variables, setting a file location that's pointing to S3, and I'm on my way. So we've tried to make this very, very easy to do, regardless of where your data lives, you can bring it into MATLAB and use it. And the idea is that minimal changes to your code, you move on with your life. Same thing here with Hadoop. If you are working with data on Hadoop, it's a similar idea. You set up some environment variables, you pass the HDFS path, and you're on your way. So really, where your data is located shouldn't hinder what you're doing on, on in terms of your analytic work. So what about reading and writing data? You'll see in MATLAB that uh, we're continuing to add to this idea, this capability. In the past, you had things where data was coming from and then where data was going to. So a couple of examples here would be things like XLS read and XLS write, or CSV read and CSV write. Some of the newer things include Parquet read and ThinkSpeak read, uh, and then the, the corresponding write functionality. But we've also added a family of functions that we call read star and write star. And this has to do with, hey, I want to read something into MATLAB as a timetable or as a matrix. Or maybe I want to write something out of MATLAB as a cell or as a struct. So we've added a, a family of complementary functions around this idea of reading data in and writing data out, trying to make that I.O. very seamless and very easy to use. And some of these functions I'm showing you here are brand new in 2019A. Um, some of them have been around for a while. Data stores uh, really represent collections of files. And I kind of think of these things as um, kind of like the front door to my house. You know, maybe the front door to my house might be painted yellow. Maybe it's got some panels on it might have a window in it and a number on it. So all these things that I just talked about to the door to my house represent the door, the properties of that door. Data stores are very much the same thing in terms of the data they represent. So if I'm working with say 2000 files, data stores would know the path to every file. They would also know the type of files I'm working with. If it's text, they know what to do with missing data or you know, if I'm gonna skip the first row that, that has some labels in it. If I'm working with images, they would know, obviously, the path to every file, but also how I'm going to read the image in, so on and so forth. So data stores represent collections of, of files and also have properties that talk about how you're going to consume those files. And they're really kind of the on-ramp to bigger data sets. So we can use data stores to read data into MATLAB, whether it's you know the entire file at a time or even chunks of files. Some, some giant files you want to read a piece at a time, and data stores can allow you or, or enable you to do that. And then once you're got the data in MATLAB and you've maybe cleaned it up or done some processing to it, maybe you want to write it out. And so there are ways to get the data out of MATLAB in terms of you know, writing out to different places and even different file types. Uh, before I leave that slide, I want to just say that there are different data stores for different data types. And what I mean by that, it doesn't make sense to use an image data store to represent text files just like it doesn't make sense to use a Parquet data store to represent image files. So the data stores are specific to data types, and we have a full list in the doc. We have a link down here where you can look at, hey, for the different data I have, this is a recommended data store for you. 
And if what you find in our documentation in terms of the, the pre-built data stores doesn't fit your needs, you can build a full-blown custom data store to do whatever you need. So that, that ability is there and, and available to you right now. Data stores allow you to preview what they're showing. So the idea being that, hey, maybe I don't want to read all 7 million rows of data in at once. And so you can kind of just get a quick sanity check of what you're going to read. In this case, I'm looking at an example CSV file. And I can see the columns that will read in. And maybe I decide that I only need three of the columns out of the 50 I have available. So here, for as an example, I'm showing you how to modify one of the properties of a, of a text data store called a selected variable name. So I can say just what columns I'm going to read in and then preview again. Again, you're just sanity checking as you go. And then when you're ready, you can call read on that data store, and it's going to bring that piece of data into memory, however you specified it, whether it's 10 rows, 1,000 rows, or the entire file. You can read that first block of information. Here's just a quick example of some of the additional properties you can work with. So there's a function called detect import options if you'd like to set all these things up um, before you do any reading. So an example, again, I'm looking at a CSV file and I want to look at what to do for missing data or maybe even, you know, what to do about line end characters and so on and so forth. All these properties are modifiable uh, and you can see what the default values are here. It gives you a lot of control over things like what happens if you have an error. What, what if you can't read something? Should we abort the whole thing or error gracefully and move on? These types of things. So that's what this is designed around. I talked about data stores and different properties. This, this extends that idea. 